Hello everyone. So today we're talking about linear functions and the slope intercept form for the linear function. So what does it look like? When you see a situation where you have y on one side and everything else on the other side and the x is to the first power, it's not squared, it's not cubed, it's not to the power of one half, it just has no power at all, it's just x. That's when you know you have a linear function and it's probably in the slope intercept form. So, what does the slope intercept form give us? Well, it has y and x and it has two numbers right here and right here, m and b, right? So, in this case, m is 2 and b is 3. Over here in this case, m is negative 3, b is 1. They could be any numbers you can think of. You can even put fractions in there if you really want to here. Wait, one. How's that? That works too. So this is the slope intercept formula. So let's talk about what is slope and what is y intercept. So first let's take a look at this number. This number is called y intercept. And the question is, well, why does it, why is it called y-intercept? What, what does it intercept, right? Because when we talk about intercept, that means like, you know, you, you're kind of like chasing after someone, they're going this way and you're going that way and you intercept them, right? So this is exactly what we're doing over here with our function. Our function intercepts the y-axis. So right now, over here on my graph, I have a blue graph, and it hits the y-axis at this point, 0 and 3. Now, what is 0 and 3? Well, those are the coordinates of this point, the x value and the y value. So you may notice that this 3 over here is the same as this 3 over here in the equation. It's because it is the same. This point. 0, 3. This 3 is right here in this equation. That's the 3. So, why, why 0 is not there? Well, listen, every single point on the y-axis actually has the x-coordinate of 0. So, if we know it's a y-intercept, if we know it intersects the y-axis, we know that the x-coordinate is 0, because it's true for all of them. So, we just want the y-coordinate, and we don't even have to graph anything, because this coordinate is right here. So, let's go ahead and play around a little bit with this equation that I've made over here. So, right now, the slope is set to be equal to 1. It's the red graph, right? And the y-intercept, which is my b value, is 1. But I can go ahead and increase it. If I increase it, my graph should shift up parallel to where it's been. And there we go. You can see it's moving up. And its y-intercept becomes higher and higher. Or I can go into the negative direction you can have a negative y-intercept. And then it's going to be a negative number. So whatever the value of this number is, right here, this is the y-coordinate of where your graph hits the y-axis. All right. So we've talked about this number. What about this one? Is that the x-intercept? Nah, it's not. Okay? Not quite that simple. This number is the slope. And the slope is literally the measure of how flat or steep our graph is. So right now for my red graph, the slope is set to 1. But as I increase it, the graph becomes steeper and steeper and steeper. And when I decrease it, it goes the other way, but you should be saying, hey, this is steeper too. Yes, but what's happening is at the point zero where the graph becomes horizontal, the graph 
tilts the other way, right? So if when we're positive, the graph is increasing, when we're negative, the graph is decreasing. 